can it be done restoring the infamous M1 and M2 tailor-made driver? I think I've got a paint that might just do it. <laughs> that was definitely not the plan. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon here at the lockup. Gonna go and pick up a tailor-made M2 2016 driver that definitely needs a bit of TLC. It's battered, it's bruised, it's chipped. And thank you to Alan who back in November put me onto this paint. And this is the first opportunity that basically I've had a chipped or battered enough M2 to actually try this on. Suggested, why don't we give this a go? You can get it on eBay, it's about six, seven pounds. I'll leave the link or whatever uh, in the description down below. And let's see what kind of results we get. If you like this video, leave it a like. Subscribe if you're new. Let's get into it. So here's the club that we are after. TaylorMade M2. Wish the head was in good condition as the head cover because the head cover's actually in really good shape. And let me show you what's underneath. So as face on, not too bad. We've got a couple of chip marks here. And to be honest, this is probably the main culprit. Normally we see massive sky marks in the toe here um, uh, where stone dirt, you name it, you might see it on yours, whether it's a rescue or three wood or whatever it might be. And they're quite sightly, especially on a big contrasting driver or wood like this. Obviously you've got the carbon at the back and if there's a big black mark on the front there, you're probably wanting to get rid of it. And as you can see the hosel here, this is the big surface area where there's massive chunks. Can we sand it down? Because there are these, this basically, some of the paint here just basically wants to flake off. Can we sand it down, paint it, dry it, polish it? My biggest advice here though, where if you were to do this to your own driver and you get it looking basically flawless, I would still mention it in the description if you were going to sell it on or to whoever you sell it on to that you have touched up the paint yourself. Um, uh, as I don't want you guys to have alarm bells ringing on the other end of the cellar and they think it's counterfeit because they see patches. I mean, I don't know how good it's going to look, but I just think it's good practice and probably the best thing you should do if you were to sell a driver that you touch the paint up on. We are back at the flat with everything that we possibly need. This is a little paint pot that you will get through the post that comes in a piece of cardboard that looks just like that. And then you will have the set of instructions, which I've now read through. So hopefully I don't mess this up. Stanley knife is going to add now extra damage to the head which we're going to do now and that's in the name of science I don't want to do it. It's going to pain me But I think realistically I need a head that's got some severe sky marks not two little chips It will give a good true review at the moment that doesn't really cut it I know obviously I've got the back here and that's going to be kind of my testing spot to obviously get used to this But let's be honest majority probably want to fix here So let's just make some of those just to make it a bit more realistic paint brushes paint Obviously I now need to clean the head with detergent, then clean with thinners, and then feed the paint slowly into the chip crater. Stage two, refill the center of the chip crater with paint, allow to dry for eight hours. So we'll have to pick this up tomorrow morning and see exactly what the head looks like. I'm going to mask and tape the face there. I'm also going to mask and tape a tiny bit of the sides and the top there as well, just so that obviously it's nice, clean, and fresh. Mask and tape that bit at the back there won't be necessary. <laughs> that was definitely not the plan. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Now I'm just scratching the face up. That's definitely not going to help the value. Oh, no. <laughs> Such tiny, small cuts. <laughs> Yet they cut so deep. <laughs> um, oh, should I do a few more, I guess? Like there. There. I definitely should have used a flat knife for this. There's no question about that. Right, I've really messed the face up. Well, I haven't messed the face up, it's still gonna be used, but obviously I've indented it somewhat. Right, I think we all would like to say that's now what a sky mark looks. Well, it definitely doesn't look like that, but that's probably as close as you're gonna get in terms of what you'd normally see off a sky mark in terms of depth and damage. So. That is also something now that we'll have to use. Obviously it's quite bumpy. So I think obviously we're gonna try and fill in this chip crater here, mask and tape up the front, clean this all up, potentially, realistically. I mean, obviously I'm no expert at this and I imagine a few of you guys that do like car repaint jobs probably say that you'd have to probably like emery cloth that down. 
sand it and then polish it afterwards once you've refilled it in anyway damage done so everything's set up we've masking taped the head in certain places that obviously need to be masking taped i highly suggest using a thinner masking tape than the double sided that i obviously had got the paint got the palette Clean that out with paint thinner again, let it dry just to make sure it's sterile. It does say to put paint in the palette before there. I imagine that's probably to get like a certain level of thickness rather than just dip in there. And also probably sterile reasons. Again, not a painter, so not too sure. So we're gonna start applying the paint to the back bits first, just obviously practice with it. It does say, obviously you do mess up, just use paint thinner again, take it all back off and then start over. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there as the first coating. That was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And I didn't realize how deep this actually was compared to what the face of it's going to be. So uh, we're gonna let that dry, see how long it takes obviously harden. I wanted to kind of go quite heavy just for the first coating and then be a bit more gentler. And, and where it's chipped away in certain places, then hopefully I can go over that later, maybe sand it down and maybe polish it and make it be tidy that up. But in terms of paint wise, in terms of matching the paint itself, I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, it's not that far off. Don't know if that's going to move or not, if I keep moving the head or if I can actually start attacking this side as well. Okay, change of plan. What we're gonna do is not do the hosel today. We're just going to do that bit because I think that's good enough surface area that we can obviously test. I think it's going to be too difficult trying to do both of them at the same time. And then what we're going to do is come around and obviously do the face now just so that we've got two bits to obviously test and make sure that we've got. But I mean, think paint wise, matches it quite good. I mean, now it's just down to a level of your painting skills, really. I mean, that is quite excessive. These, I'm hoping, should be quite easy. Okay, so top of the driver, somewhat done. And this is the issue that I'm finding realistically is that unless it's like massive and obviously you drop the paint in, like the small ones, it's all quite bumpy. But here's the plan. We're gonna let it dry to a certain point. Obviously I think it matches the head itself um, uh, quite nicely. And then we'll smooth it down to the point that it's then smooth on top of the head. That is the plan anyway. So that's what it looks like at the moment. Masking tape didn't really help to be perfectly honest, just because the paint itself I mean, you've got to do it so quickly before it dries. It's essentially just like nail polish. But that's where we're at the moment. Let's say, a bit of an experiment. Let's say we finish up. Okay, good morning, gents. How are we all doing? Paint is now dried. So, the plan of this morning is to finally sand down the edges, because let's be honest, it's been quite clumsy with the paint. I've overspilled quite a bit on the top of the driver there. So we're going to smooth it down, see if I can smooth it down to a point that you can just apply a tiny bit more paint so now everything at least the surface is then dry and then we'll go buff it up and see what it looks like this is definitely me taking it into my own hands i do not recommend any of this at this point i'm pretty sure i have no idea what i'm doing but if this method works it just means that you can keep reapplying it smooth it down reapplying it smooth it down it reminds me of nail polish this paint which is a very interesting thought because there's so many nail polishes out there that surely we can just find certain nail polishes that match a certain drivers to a point that when you're standing at a dress, you won't even notice it. Right, next process done. We're down to the point now that I probably need to apply another coat of paint. As you can see, I've kind of rounded off the edges of the back here. So that is, um, uh, hasn't got massive ridges, let's say. And the sandpaper has actually done quite a good job. Hopefully you can guys can see that. It's kind of just taken off the paint or the excess paint, I should say, on the top and kind of just left the cracks filled in. Okay, paint reapplied number two. Obviously, I've got to now let this dry. I've been a lot more sparing. I think I've realised, A, I definitely need a decent brush. There's no question about that. But because I now know that I can kind of take off the edges with the sandpaper, I think I was trying to be like too perfect, like just paint it and then I hope it's going to dry perfectly. I was a bit too sparing. Whereas this time, I've basically just filled all the big bits where I I know the cracks were and then we're just gonna go over it with very fine sandpaper and then we'll buff those out so then it all matches because what i realize is that you can take off the paint quite easily the actual um like paint or original paint or the tailor-made driver is actually quite robust so that's just going to stay there and then you go take everything else so i kind of filled in all the tiny little marks on the top of the crown and hopefully when we then go to sand it down everything will be full and then we can buff it up and then we'll be good okay all dried up time to get sanding again and then we are going to then buff it up to see what it looks and the final towards the end but i mean the paint does look like a pretty good match i'm hoping when i buff it up um it'll be pretty 
um, uh, close once it's as shiny because it's a bit matte compared to the head itself. But overall, we're not looking too bad at the moment. One thing I've learned through this whole process is it's very difficult to focus on the top of a tailor-made driver when it's this gleaming white and the sun's out. We are done for today. I'm gonna leave it there, I've learned a lot. Definitely need to invest in better brushes, definitely need to get um, uh, a better process. It's definitely fiddly, but I think you can be a bit more generous with the paint overall. I'll do a quick before and after now so you can see the difference of where we were and where we are now. In terms of the paint, I mean, that is flush. It looks like it's still indented, but that's just the contrast between the gloss and the actual matte finish. So, I mean, the product itself costs $7.99, I think, eBay, $6.99. I will leave a link. It definitely makes a difference. Like, if you were to go from up here where your driver would be, it's not going to be as nice. And also, if you were to have a massive sky mark on the top that's gone all the way down to the black finished paint, then once you buff it, whiten it, paint it again a few more times, again, you can take as much time with this as you'd like. I imagine you can get it quite similar. Not perfect, though. So, guys, there you have it. My first attempt of trying to restore, refer, repaint a tailor-made M1 head. Let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts. How did I do? What did I do wrong? Give me some advice down in the comment section because I'll definitely be up for getting this as perfect or as close as possible through trial and error. For someone that's a complete amateur at this and has no idea, which I imagine is quite similar to a lot of you guys that are watching. If you like this video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys later. Morning Tom, hope you're doing well. Good afternoon mate, well done on the lesson and evening Alan, not a problem at all and Testing the G30s. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, o